Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we'll be looking at this problem that is called number of subsequences that satisfy the given sum condition. So given an array of integer nums and an integer target, we have to return the total number of non-empty subsequences of this nums array such that the sum of the minimum and the maximum element in those subsequences is less than or equal to the given target. And they also say that the answer might be too large, so we have to return its modulo with 10 to the power 9 plus 7, right? So how do we start thinking about this problem? The very basic approach that comes to our mind is obviously to form all the possible subsequences of this array, validate all of them, see if the maximum and the minimum elements of those subsequences uh, sum up to the a valid sum or if they are invalid, and simply add the counts of counts of all the valid subsequences to our counter and return that counter in the end. This will obviously give you a time limit exceeded error because finding the maxima, maxima and the minimum elements is a time consuming process and just forming all of those possible subsequences again a very uh, a very time consuming process and this will definitely result in a TLE. So we need to think about this in a smarter manner. What we can do is we can simply reduce this overhead of finding the minimum and the maximum elements altogether. What we can do is we can simply sort this array. We can sort the array and this would mean that for any subsequence that we choose, the minimum element would always be the leftmost element and the maximum element would always be the rightmost element for any subsequence that we create. Now, some of you might argue that sorting an array might just change the solution space altogether. It might just change the question altogether. But that's not the case. Because we were never really concerned about the position of any of those elements. All we were concerned about was the magnitude of the minimum and the maximum elements that were present in those subsequences. And since we don't change any of the of any of these numbers, we only change their positions. So we can still form all those possible subsequences that we could earlier, except that they're rearranged in such a manner that for all those subsequences, the minimum elements occur to the leftmost element, and the maximum element in all of those subsequences occur as the occurs as the rightmost element. So we just remove that entire overhead of having to find the minimum and the maximum elements, and we can still form all those possible subsequences. Right. So how do we ex uh, explore this problem further? If you've seen my video on two sum, this is a little bit similar to that. And in fact, in the three sum video, we used uh, the concept of sorting an array to solve that two sum problem. So just check out those videos if you haven't already, and this will they'll help you understand how we proceed further. Otherwise, you can just continue watching this one. I'll explain it uh, all again. So here we have an example with the array elements as 3, 3, 6, and 8, and the target as 10. Now this, L, this array is already sorted for us, so we don't need to do that. So what we do is, in typical to some fashion, we fix the leftmost element as the first element of the array, and we fix the rightmost boundary as the last element of the array, right? So the minimum element will obviously be the leftmost element, and the maximum element will obviously be the rightmost element because we had sorted the array. So the minimum plus ma maximum element sum comes out to be 3 plus 8, which is 11. And that is invalid because this is greater than the target that we are given. So we need to reduce the search space. We know that the maximum element is overshooting our target element. So we need to, re we need to reduce the search space and we need to f look into smaller elements. So we reduce the right boundary and we move it to the left by one space. And now we have a reduced search space which consists of the six of six as the largest element and three as the minimum element. And now we check in the search space and we see that the maximum possible sum of in the search space, if we take the minimum and the maximum possible elements is three plus six, which is nine. And that is a valid number. That is a valid sum because this is smaller than the target. So you say that this is a valid subarray from which we can start choosing subsequences. So if you know a little bit of permutation, it's pretty easy to figure out how many ways are there to select any number of elements. It's basically 2 to the power of number of elements. But there's a trick to it. This also includes those cases where we do not select any elements. And we are already given in the question that we're not allowed to choose non-empty subsequences. So what we do is, we just fix one of those elements. We just fix the smallest element. We just say that you have to take the smallest element, right? And we just fix those elements. And that means that we only have to, we only have a choice to select or not select elements that are ranging from the left plus one -th index to the right index. So all we need to write here is 
uh, total number of elements from the left plus one to the right most index will be right minus left plus one plus one. This is the total number of elements that are there from the left plus one to the right most index. And we have a we and we have two choices for each of those elements, which is to choose or not to choose them. So we just put this number as a power of two. This is just basic permutation. If you have any idea for that, this should be pretty simple to understand. And we can just simplify this further. We can open the brackets and this will get give us something like this and the ones cancel out. So we get two to the power right minus left, right? And this is zero based indexing, uh, just so you know, that's why we're doing the plus one in the end. So this is what we have as the total number of subsequences that you can form when you have, when you're considering a sub array or a subsequence from the left most to the right, from the left boundary to the right boundary, where we have fixed the smallest element because we don't want any non-empty subsequences, right? Now, this give, gives us the total number of subsequences that we can form with this sub array. Now, we change the search space. We say that let's, let's look at all the subsequences where this element, the leftmost element is not the smallest element. So what we do is we decrease or shorten the search space further. We move the leftmost element towards one sp space to the right. Now in this case, the smallest element still is three, which is all right for our case, which is all right for this example again, but this could be some different element and this could give us further more uh, examples, right? This can give us further more subsequences. So this time we'll uh, again uh, fix this leftmost element because we aren't taking any non-empty subsequences and we just have a choice for the rightmost element. We, we only have one element left and we have two choices for that to select or not to select it. And this will simply give us two choices for forming a subsequence, which will be three and six and just three itself. And going further on, we'll again uh, move the left pointer towards the right and we'll get something like this, right? And we simply we will simply say that we aren't allowed any non-empty subsequences. So this will be two to the power right minus left. This will come out to be zero and we'll get one as the total possible number of subsequences that we have here, right? So this is how you do it. And this is basically the approach that you'll be using in the code itself. And you must notice that for this approach to work, we always need to find two to the power of right minus left and we always need to find this exponent, right? And if you use the built-in power function for inside C++, you will face a time limit error, right? It takes a little bit of time to calculate. And if you just do this again and again for all the possible numbers, it will take quite a bit of time. So what we'll do is we'll simply calculate this uh, entire exponent, all the possible exponents that we'll need. We'll just calculate all of them beforehand and we'll keep them ready, right? So how do we do that? The first thing that we'll do is we'll define a constant integer which will store this modulus number that we have. We'll define it as one e nine plus seven. Then we'll start forming that entire vector which will contain all the exponents of two that we might need to find the total number of subsequence within some boundaries. So we'll define that as a vector of integers and I'll call that exps for exponents. The size will be nums.size this will be the same size as the number of elements because that will simply be the maximum exponent that we might ever need to find. And we'll initialize all the elements with one. The x, the i equal to zero will obviously be one. So we won't uh, calculate that. We'll start off with i equal to one. So int i equal to one, while i is smaller than exps dot size plus plus i. And we'll simply write exps of i equal to uh, two multiplied by exps of i minus one. We'll just multiply the previous exponent that we had calculated with two so that we don't have to do repetitive uh, computations. And just uh, to abide by the uh, instruction that they've given us in the end that we need to just keep moduloing each, uh, we just need to find the modulus of each of those larger numbers with 10 to the power nine plus seven. So we'll just find a mod here as well so that we don't turn into too large, uh, into uh, very large numbers, right? So just because they've told us to do a model, we'll do that here. Now, we need to sort this array. So what we'll do is we'll simply call the sorting function on nums from the beginning to the last element, something like this. And then we need to define the leftmost and the rightmost boundaries for our search space because now we begin the actual algorithm. So we just define int left equal to zero and right equal to 
nums.size minus 1 and define count as 0. Now what we do is we run a while loop until left is smaller than equal to right until they converge we run this while loop and now we check for each of those sub arrays that we select if the subsequence that we select with those minimum and the maximums will be valid. So we just check the sum of the minimum and the maximum elements in this current search space. So we get nums of left plus nums of right. If this turns out to be greater than the given target, we know that we need to look into smaller elements. So we decrease the rightmost boundary. So we just write right minus minus. Now if this was not the case and this was a valid uh, sub array or a valid search space, all we need to do is increment the count with the total number of possible subsequences in that given search space, which will, which we, as we calculated was two to the power right minus left. So we'll just write EXPS right minus left. And we'll just mod this up again so that we don't overflow our integer bounds, something like this. And we'll simply increase the left pointer because then we'll start looking into search spaces with larger minimum elements, right? We need to look into the further search spaces as well. So as we did in the example that we discussed, we just move the left pointer one step to the right to look for the other search spaces. And once you have uh, iterated through the loop, you can simply return this count that you had calculated. And if you run it, this should give you a correct answer. And it does. Let's submit that. So yes, this gets accepted. And this is how you basically approach this problem. And I'm planning to cover a few more sliding window problems. So let me know if you like this one and I will cover a few more of these. And because sliding window is a pretty popular approach and it's pretty important uh, in your interviews because these questions do get asked quite a bit. So this is it for this video. If you like this, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos. And I will see you in the next one.